Monarch butterflies are summer residents of the United States and Canada. Each monarch begins its life as an egg laid on milkweed. The eggs are often laid on the underside of tender leaves at the top of plants, but can also be found on flower buds, pods, and stems. When the average temperature is in the 70s, the egg takes about four days to hatch. Just before it hatches, the black head capsule of the caterpillar can be seen inside the egg. The caterpillar chews its way out of the egg and eats the nutritious eggshell as its first meal. Eating milkweed with its milky sap is a challenge for the young caterpillar. The milk from the milkweed is sticky and can be dangerous. A young caterpillar could be trapped and drowned. Most caterpillars chew an arc pattern, cutting the veins in the leaf and creating a safe area in which to eat. As soon as the caterpillar comes out of its egg, it begins to attach itself to its leaf by a silk thread produced from a spinneret located under its head. If it falls, either by accident or to hide from a predator, it can use the thread to climb back up onto the leaf. The caterpillar stage is the growing stage of the monarch butterfly. Monarchs are insects. All insects have three body sections, head, thorax, and abdomen. They breathe through holes on their body, called spiracles, which connect to a system of tubes called trachea that take oxygen all throughout their body. Caterpillars have six true legs, like all insects, and they are attached to their thorax. On their abdomens are five pairs of legs called prolegs that are present only in the caterpillar stage. Monarch caterpillars have filaments on the front and back that help them orient to the world around them. All insects have exoskeletons. The exoskeleton is also called a cuticle. It is tough and gives the caterpillar, the chrysalis, and the butterfly structure but it does not grow or stretch very much. In order to grow, the caterpillar sheds its exoskeleton five times. People who study butterflies refer to the stages between the molts as instars. When a caterpillar hatches, it's said to be in first instar. The first time it sheds, it becomes a second instar caterpillar. Monarch caterpillars go through five instars. Each instar has particular features. First instar caterpillars have an all-black head capsule. The filaments that are so obvious in an older caterpillar are barely visible in the front and not visible at all in the back. With a powerful magnifying glass, you can see tiny hairs called seti that cover the caterpillar. They are actually sensory organs that help the caterpillar hear, feel, and smell. They are present at all stages, but they seem bigger on the first instar caterpillar because it is so small. When it has eaten and grown as much as it can, the caterpillar must shed its tight cuticle. It uses silk from its spinneret to put down a silk mat. It hooks its pro legs into the silk mat. Its cuticle splits just behind the head capsule, and the tough head capsule disconnects. You can see it sticking to the front of the caterpillar's head just before it molts. The hooks on the caterpillar's pro legs hold the old cuticle in place. When it's ready, the caterpillar crawls out, just like you might crawl out of a sleeping bag with a stuck zipper. The second instar caterpillar's front and back filaments are small but clearly visible. It has yellow, white, and black stripes and the classic monarch head capsule pattern with a triangle in the middle. Third instar caterpillars have longer filaments. Inside the third instar caterpillar, special cells called imaginal cells are beginning to grow wings for the butterfly it will soon become. Most monarch caterpillars will eat their shed skin. First through third instar caterpillars eat all day and sleep all night. By the time it is a fourth instar caterpillar, the monarch will eat day and night. There are small white spots on its prolegs and the black, yellow, and white pattern is becoming more complex. Fifth instar caterpillars are eating machines, eating day and night. Inside, especially as they reach full size, many of the butterfly features are growing, getting ready for the caterpillar to become a chrysalis. In two weeks, the caterpillar grows 3,000 times the size it was when it hatched. If a second grader grew this fast, in two weeks she would be the size of a school bus. When it is done eating, the fifth instar caterpillar will wander about, looking for a good place to make its chrysalis. It will lay down a mat of silk threads and carefully create a silk button in the middle. When the button is ready, it will grasp it with its last pair of prolegs and let go with all of its other legs. 
We call this stage hanging in J. The caterpillar will hang this way for about 18 hours as it rearranges its body inside its caterpillar cuticle, putting all of its new butterfly parts in the right places to become a chrysalis. When it is ready, the old caterpillar cuticle will split for the fifth time. This time will be different. Inside its tight cuticle, a chrysalis is formed and ready to come out into the world. This time, the cuticle splits between the front filaments. The chrysalis wriggles and rise, pushing the old cuticle up toward the silk button where it is holding on with its last prolegs. It will draw a stick like appendage called a cremaster out of the wad of old cuticle and jam it into the silk button. It wriggles and writhes to entangle the tiny hooks on the cremaster in the silk button and to get the old cuticle to fall away. Over several hours, the chrysalis will pull itself up tight and compact, and the new cuticle will harden. For eight to ten days, big changes will take place inside. Though many of the butterfly structures are already formed, they need time to be completed. Caterpillar muscles will be broken down, and new butterfly muscles built. The leaf processing caterpillar digestive system will be replaced with a nectar processing digestive system. In eight to ten days, the scales forming on the wings of the butterfly will be visible through the clear cuticle. The monarch will molt one last time. We call this a closing. The long butterfly legs push out a long triangle of chrysalis cuticle. The tiny wings and swollen abdomen of the new butterfly plop out into the world. The butterfly knits together the two sides of its proboscis to form a perfect straw for sipping nectar. Contractions in the swollen abdomen force butterfly blood into veins in the wings. As the veins Still, they expand the wings to their full size. The easiest way to tell if you have a male or female monarch butterfly is to look for the scent glands, two small dots on the veins of the hind wing in the male. The female does not have these dots. Most of the summer, the closing monarchs will mate and lay eggs. They will live as butterflies only two to four weeks. But in late summer, a closing butterflies are part of the great migratory generation of monarchs. They will live eight months and make a great journey to assure the survival of their species. Beginning first in the northernmost reaches of the breeding zone, butterflies will emerge in reproductive diapause. They will not mate and their bodies will have more lipid cells, allowing them to store energy. We know that the onset of this change is correlated with the changing angle of the sun as fall approaches. By late August, all the closing monarchs will be in reproductive diapause and ready to migrate. These butterflies will nectar and prepare to glide on the wind south to Mexico or west to the coast in California. From all over North America, millions of monarchs will travel down across the lower United States. They will cross the deserts and mountains of Mexico to a place just west of Mexico City, high in the mountains of Michoacan, a place none of them have ever been before. Here, millions of monarchs will cluster in the OML fir trees and spend the winter. The temperatures are cool enough to slow down their metabolism, though they will still go out and nectar on warm, sunny days. People will come to the reserves from all over the world to see the spectacle of millions of monarchs clustering in the trees, nectaring, and drinking water from mountain streams. Most monarchs west of the Rockies will spend the winter clustered in trees along the Pacific coast. In late February, the clusters of butterflies in both California and Mexico will begin to break up. The butterflies will stream down the mountains in Mexico. They will mate and begin their migration north. In March and April, monarchs will start showing up in the southern United States. In the spring of 2011, drought and hot conditions in the southern United States pushed the migrating monarchs as far north as Kansas and West Virginia in April. We are watching to see